Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today I need to do some maintenance on my resin based SLA 3D printer. So I want to bring you along and talk you through the process and also compare the resin printer to the maintenance that you normally need to do for your FDM printers. Uh, there's a little bit more that you have to do for the SLA. So I wanted to kind of walk you through what is and is not a consumable and kind of the process behind maintaining these machines. Uh, Cause it's a pretty interesting process. The main one that I have to do today is I have to replace the resin tank. Uh, because over time these tanks do wear out and that does affect the quality of your prints uh, So we're just going to swap it out with a brand new one um, Now I just want to show you that this is after about hundred and fifty hours of printing so you can see here It's a single focus uh, That this machine's been printing for about hundred and fifty six hours uh, So after that amount of time you may expect to have to replace your resin tank uh, so let's open up the printer, let's take a look at why this tank needs replacing, and then we'll walk through the process of actually replacing it. So if I take off the top of the printer here, and I bring you guys on in to the resin tank, uh, you'll notice that it's very cloudy. So the bottom of the tank has developed this kind of cloudy appearance. Uh, and that's because the very bottom of the tank um, Right against the edge, there is a uh, kind of a Teflon or silicone um, kind of liner at the bottom. And this wears out over time. So as you print more and more on the printer, uh, the silicone kind of wears down and it gets this cloudy appearance. And that cloud will actually affect how this printer prints because the laser will shine underneath. And if it's cloudy, then that laser is not going to be as powerful. You know, that cloud's going to absorb a little bit of the... Uh, uh, of the laser lights and you'll end up with more and more failed prints and that's why when printing on a SLA printer uh, you often want to print all over the build plate you can't just print into a single area you actually want to move it around so that the entire build or the entire resin vat wears evenly over time so you can see that I did a pretty good job of that you know it's a little bit more cloudy right in the middle but even towards the edges uh, this has become cloudy. So what we need to do is we need to replace this resin tank and replace it with one that is brand new, that doesn't have this cloud, so I can continue to print some awesome prints. And before you do any work with these resin machines, it's a good idea to wear some gloves uh, because this resin is really sticky and it has a tendency to get everywhere. So gloves, definitely important, as well as having a lot of paper towels and some rubbing alcohol uh, really helps to clean up afterwards. Um, so let's get started. What we'll do is first, let's just pull out the resin tank and let's compare the cloudy resin tank with this brand new resin tank. Now these are uh, pretty expensive. Um, a new tank for this particular 3D printer, which is the XYZ Nobel 1.0A. Uh, these tanks cost about $55 to replace. Um, so if I can just get it out of the packaging here, we can see that this is a brand new tank and there's absolutely no cloud on the bottom. There's a plastic protective covering here, so I'm just going to open that up with a knife, taking care not to touch the underside. You don't want any fingerprints on the bottom of the build tank. So after I unwrap it, I'm going to be very uh, cautious not to touch the bottom, even with gloves on. I'm just going to hold it from the side. And you can see here that it is brand new and there is no clouds. Uh, this is what you want. Um, so now that we have this ready, we can go ahead and remove... Uh, first we'll remove the lines leading to the resin tank in the back. The bottle of resin. Um, there's still some resin in this resin vat, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it and we'll empty it back in here because you want to save as much of the resin as possible because this stuff is actually pretty expensive, uh, especially compared to the plastic filament for FDM machines. That filament's, you know, about 15 to 20 dollars per kilogram. This is about 120 dollars per kilogram of resin. So it is considerably more expensive. So you want to keep as much as possible. So this just slides out. 
and we can take another look and you can see as I move it around there's still some resin in here so what we'll want to do is just kind of empty it back into the bottle because this is all good resin and can be reused once we swap out that resin tank. Um, another thing to note with SLA 3D printers is you notice that I have clear resin here. They have resins of all different colors, uh, but you can't use the same resin tank um, between different colors. You need a new resin tank per color uh, because the pigment, it'll be impossible to get all of the resin out of this uh, resin vat. So in order to, you know, prevent mixing of different resins and different pigments, uh, you just need to buy new resin tanks for each color you have. So that does kind of add to the cost of this SLA printing. We'll just leave it here for a couple of seconds to drain out as much as possible because there's no way that I can reuse this resin tank. It's pretty much done. So I'm just going to have to toss it after this. But I want to get as much of this as possible. Um, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to scrape down the uh, the resin vat because another problem with the SLA printers is you often end up with metal particles in the bottom of the build vat. Because if you scrape the very top, so if you look at this build platform where the prints actually go, after a print, you normally scrape off any remaining resin back into the resin vat. And since this is metal, the scraping often scrapes off a little bit of those metal flakes and it winds up in the bottom of this build vat. Uh, and you can actually see along the corners that there's little metal particles. So if I were to go in here and try to scrape back all of this resin, then all of that metal particles will just end up back into the resin bottle and get, you know, pushed back into the new build plat or new resin tank. And that's not what I want. So you can actually see some of the dirt and debris left in the bottom of this old uh, resin vat. You can see all kinds of dirt over here. There's a lot of the metal flakes from the build platform from scraping off the extra resin. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that accumulates at the bottom of these resin tanks. And it's another uh, reason why these are consumables because over time that'll just degrade the quality of your prints. So it's about time that this uh, resin vat gets replaced. And after we've removed the resin vat, it's a good idea to take a look at the screen at the bottom. Underneath, this is where the laser will shine up from. And you want to make sure that that's extremely clean. You don't want any dirt or dust on that. And this looks pretty good. Um, if there were dirt, you can just uh, take some cloth and kind of wipe it down um, just to make sure that it's really clean. Sometimes, uh, if you're, you know, switching out resin, sometimes you, resin may drop on there. Uh, you don't want that because that will also degrade the quality of your print. So just make sure this bottom surface is nice and clean. And also when swapping out these resin tanks, you want to do it pretty quickly so that more dirt doesn't settle under here. Normally it's protected by the resin tank, uh, but with it exposed, obviously stuff can get in there. So let's get to replacing this. Uh, but installing the new tank is actually extremely easy. It's as simple as just sliding it in. Now we're going to have to recalibrate the 3D printer because the build plate needs to be uh, uh, kind of flush to the bottom of this new tank. And, you know, it's a different tank. So we'll have to do a little bit of calibration. Uh, but that's pretty much the install of the new tank. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and put back in the resin. So if I just put the bottle back in the back here and I reconnect the uh, the cables or the hoses, uh, this printer is pretty cool because it has auto filling enabled for the resin. Uh, there's this sensor that you may have noticed in the back and that'll detect the resin level. And when the level of the resin in the tank gets low, it'll just put more resin in the middle of the print. You don't have to stop the print, open up the bottle and pour more in like you do with some other resin printers. Now before I add back in the resin, uh, I want to take a look at the build plates because the build plate itself is also a consumable. So if you notice the bottom here, uh, there's scratches all over the metal surface. And over time, as you're peeling off more and more prints and using a scraper to scrape it off, uh, this will wear down over time. And you can also see, you know, all those scratches is where the metal flakes end up it back in the, uh, the resin vats. So over time, this does wear down and you will need to replace this. 
This one still is pretty good and I'm not going to replace it yet. Um, but when you do, it'll be about $100. This little piece is $100 to replace. Uh, the build vats are about $55. So those consumables do add up uh, if you're using these machines on a you know regular basis. Uh, but for now, this is going to be good, so I'm just going to put this back on here. If you were swapping uh, pigments and resin types, um, before you swap the build plates, what you want to do is wipe down this entire build platform because this will be covered in resin. Uh, so you want to make sure that none of the original resin remains on this build platform uh, before it gets plunged back into your you know, new swapped resin because that will contaminate it. Um, but we're good on this one, so I'm just going to put this back in. And now comes the fun part. We're going to go and we're going to install more resin. And the pipes are installed correctly, so I'm going to click OK. And we'll see here that it's pushing air through this clear tube, which is going to push fill our uh, resin out from the black tube. And it's just going to keep filling it up until it reaches the uh, the max level in which the little plunger here, the little floater, uh, will lift up and it will let the machine know that enough resin has been pushed into this uh, new resin vat. And it's going to push it up to this level. You can actually see the max lines over here. Um, I am really impressed with XYZ Printing's uh, implementation of all of this. It is extremely easy to swap out resin and add new resin in. And these floaters do a great job of detecting the resin level. I haven't had any print failures due to uh, not having enough resin, which is amazing. And it's also pretty cool to watch this thing fill up. It does take about a minute to push all of that resin in. Uh, you can see some of the resin surrounding the plunger or the little floater now. Um, but it's still got a little bit more to go before this thing is filled up. So I'm going to let it do its thing and we'll come back once this new resin tank has been filled up with resin. There you go. You can see that the floater lifted up just a little bit, and that's enough to let it know that the resin tank is full. And uh, we should be good to uh, go recalibrate the machine, and then we can start doing printing. And then the last step we need to do when we're placing the resin vat is to do what's called horizon calibration. So the bottom of the build plates that that plane needs to be exactly parallel to the bottom of our new resin vats. Uh, because if they're tilted at all, then it's not going to lie flat upon the bottom here, and your prints aren't going to stick to the build plates, and you're going to have a lot of print failures. Uh, luckily, it's pretty easy to do. These, uh, this build plates has four screws that locks in the position, and so if I just loosen these screws, and now that they're all loosened, you can see that I can move the build platform not only forward and backward, but also side to side. So I have full control over how this uh, build platform lays up on the bottom. So now that this is nice and loose, we can actually go to the uh, menu here and I can select horizon calibration and make sure that the build platform is clear. Everything's good. So I can press OK. And once I do, it's going to lower the build uh, plate down to the bottom of our resin vat and since this is nice and loose it'll actually lie perfectly on the bottom and then once we're there we can go ahead and tighten up all of the screws and we should be good to go now this is very similar to leveling the build plates for your FDM printer uh, normally for those you have to adjust you know little screws to move the platform up and down uh, this does it a little bit differently because it can just lie on the bottom of the resin vats. Um, and this works beautifully. I've never had an easier way of leveling the bed uh, because it just pushes it down, you tighten it up, and you're good to go. So now that we're on the bottom, you can actually sit here, and what I'll do is I'll just push this around a little bit just to make sure it really is lying on the bottom. And you can see as I push, it's going to push the build uh, the resin vat downwards. 
Um, so we just want to make sure that there's not a lot of resin between the platform and the tank. And what I'm going to do here is while I'm pushing pressure down on the bottom here, I'm going to just tighten these screws and we should be good to, uh, to do a quick little test print. First print with the new resin tank is done and that looks like a successful print to me. Let's take it off the build plates and uh, take a look at the print and the build tank is looking fine. There is no clouding or anything yet so that's a great sign. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that print. And here is the finished test piece. If I shine a UV flashlight onto it, you can see all of the beautiful details. I really love this clear resin. Uh, but you can see that this piece finished beautifully, and that means the new resin tank is working just as expected and that the build platform is calibrated just right. Uh, so I think that we swapped things out quite beautifully. Um, and you can see the kind of process that these SLA printers have to go through to switch it out. It's not quite as easy to maintain as your normal FDM printers. Uh, there's a few more consumables, like you have to replace the resin tank, you have to replace the build platform every now and then, unlike what you need to do with the FDM printers, where it's really just the filament that you're paying for. Uh, but with this, there's a little bit more extra work, so you just got to make sure to factor that in. Uh, when you're printing these into the cost of each print. And I think that'll be it for this video. You can see the old cloudy resin tank that uh, is basically useless at the moment. There's no recycling program. I can't send this back to XYZ Printing and have them do anything with it. Uh, so it's, it's really just, you know, it's done its duty now. And now we have this nice new resin tank all ready to uh, keep printing. And we'll see if I get another 150 or so hours uh, out of this new build plates. So thank you all for watching and joining me as I do a little bit of maintenance. I hope you learned a little bit and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.